Hello, free footy friends. Welcome back to another 4 p.m. session. Everyone, please welcome back Brody Clark. How are you doing, Brody? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing great, Adrian. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. You have a better view than I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm up here in northern Ontario. Uh, family awesome. cabin with a hoop. Yeah. So That's super cool. It, it works out pretty well for the session. No kidding. Um, hey, Brody, for those who don't know you, you want to give us a little bit of, you know, your background info and kind of like your journey as a basketball athlete? Yeah, so I'm from Toronto originally. Um, I played university basketball at the University of Alberta in Edmonton for five years. Um, I... I've played on the Canadian junior national team in the past. I've played on the Canadian student games team uh, last summer. Yeah. Um, and then last summer, I also was lucky enough to be drafted to the Edmonton Stingers as their developmental player um, and currently pursuing more professional basketball. And I just signed a contract to go play in Germany this coming year and hopefully with the virus everything works out that's awesome that's super yeah. cool congratulations on that um super impressive career that you've had so far and um and for everyone that's watching we're going to talk to brody about setting goals and how he set his goals to you know to accomplish everything that he's done so far so we'll do that after but first let's get into some skills what let's are you going to be showing us today uh, yeah, I think I was going to go right back to basics and talk about finishing around the hoop today. So the two main things I thought we would focus on were a layup, just a regular layup, and a hook shot, which uh, is going to be helpful for the taller members watching the, the show today. So um, first we'll get into the layup. I'm sure a lot of people have seen the technique on it before. Obviously, it's the number one thing everybody does in basketball, uh, but I have my hoop, so I figured yeah. I may as well use it. Um, all right, so... Well, before we do that, um, for all the kids that aren't at home and don't have a hoop like I am, um, definitely watch and just practice because I know there's a lot of things you have to do before you even get to the hoop, right? Absolutely. So, it's not even about the finish so much as the footwork. Exactly. So definitely pay attention, practice those footworks. If you're at home, uh, still get your ball out and practice that footworks. And then that way, when you get onto the court, you can, you can practice the full layup and the full hook, hook shot. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, first off, uh, for those of you who aren't super familiar with basketball, you're only allowed to take two steps after you've picked up the ball following your dribble. So, in order to make the most of those two steps, you want to try to use them to get to the rim from wherever you were before. And that's where the layup footwork comes into play. So, first of all, uh, I'm right handed. Most of you are probably right handed. <laughs> Can you hear me, Adriana? Yeah, I'm, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so um, I'm, gonna, I'm here on the right side of the hoop. Ball's in my right hand. I was dribbling, and I have those defenders all around. Then I have teammates elsewhere, but it's me in the rim, and I'm ready to do this. I want to score two points. So I'm dribbling right-handed, and my last dribble, I don't know if you can see my feet. Let me know if you can't. But my last dribble, my right, my right dribble is going down with my left foot. Okay, yeah. And now I'm ready to gather. I'm ready to pick up the ball so that I can shoot it. But I'm not going to shoot it from here. And so that last dribble allows me to get into my footwork. Right foot and then left foot. And then I'm going to explode to the rim. Okay. So in fast pace, what it comes down to is you're dribbling around. And now you're like, I want to do my layup. And I got the ball in my right hand. And I'm going to dribble right left and I'm finished right oh I did the wrong I did it wrong oh my god <laughs> I need some yeah okay oh, yeah. here's a picture so this knee up it's gonna be if you're putting doing a right layup your right knee would come up correct because you're jumping off your left foot yeah okay yeah so dribble up up yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. So, 
uh, the natural progression of that would be for everybody's uh, least favorite thing is to go and try it on the left side. So your footwork would then be backwards. Um, a lot of people don't like doing left hand layups unless they're actually left handed. It makes a huge difference being able to use that left hand at the rim to finish around and over defenders. So it would be the exact same thing, but you're flipping it over. Now, instead of your last dribble being with your right foot, sorry, your right hand and your left foot, your last dribble is going to be with your left hand and your right foot. Now, again, a whole lot of other basketball happening. So I don't know what you've done before this to get to this point. Maybe you used the jab step and the crossover that we talked about last time. But now you're here, it's you in the rim. And your last dribble, right foot, left hand. You're going left foot, right foot. Go to the rim and hopefully not miss like I just did. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, is there something? OK, I just unpin this. Is there? something that you should be doing with your other hand like um you know it kind of depends so at the start like when you really want to get used to the the motion of doing a layup when i was taught to do it it was basically the same as my jump shot so it was for me to take my two steps and then essentially just go up as if i was going to shoot it regularly right so whatever you do with your off hand i would say do that Okay. I mean, basketball is a game that you're going to constantly evolve and improve at and be able to do different things with one hand or both hands or the other hand or switching hands. Okay. But for the sake of simplicity, I mean, do whatever you feel is most comfortable with your offhand. Okay. Because I was like, I've always heard of like when you're doing this, you kind of want to use your other hand to like keep defenders away. Because right. when you're like here, it's, you're, it's so vulnerable, I guess. Yeah, and I think a big part of basketball really is you don't want to, you know, when the ball's in your hand, you don't want to lose it. So uh, if that means, you know, when you're dribbling, you're keeping your guide hand out to make sure that no one can come and steal, you're keeping their hands away yeah. or something, you're going to the rim and you have this hand free, you know, you don't need it to hold on to the basketball if you're skilled enough to take it off and use it for blocking or whatever else you might want to. It's always something to keep in mind. Okay. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, layups and oh no, I lost the question, but that's okay. Layups are good. They're fun. I love it when you're on a break. Like I don't know if you call it a breakaway, but it's, break, break away. it's all the same. You know, and when you're going and oh, this is what I was gonna ask. There has to be a sweet spot, sweet spot on that backboard, right? Absolutely. So the backboard was designed for you to know where the sweet spot is. There's two squares on it mostly. If you have a glass backboard like this, yeah. um, it would be the little square right above the rim. Yeah. And basically you're aiming for that square unless you want to get fancy and try and swish it, which right. I would not recommend to first time basketball players because okay. it's bad habits. You want to use the backboard as much as possible. I still struggle with it. But um, on a lot of hoops, you might not have that square. And so basically you're gonna imagine, imagine it, uh, <laughs> look up what a basketball square, a basketball backboard might look like. And uh, basically uh, that's the area of the backboard that you wanna aim for. You wanna have a nice soft touch on it. Oh, I'll see if I can give you a little demo. Hopefully I won't miss this time. <laughs> okay. Go right into the right hand layup again. So I'm coming down the lane. I've got my last dribble. Right, left. Hopefully in the video you can see close enough to that the ball. Like the, right in that right square. In that square and it went right through the net. That's what it's okay. designed to do. So anywhere in that square. I mean, that's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can okay. Play around with yeah. it. You can get higher on the backboard. You can get to the side of it a little bit, but the square is kind of there just to give you a bit of a guideline. Okay, because that's what I was gonna say. Was I love when you know uh, players are on that breakaway, and then it's like, okay, they're just gonna do a simple layup, just simple layup, you know? And then it's like they get up and they miss the net all together, yeah. and it's like, dang. Yeah, I mean, definitely, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta keep your focus all the way through to the end. There's a lot, yeah. uh, a lot to take in there. That's awesome. Um, okay, so my last question with layups is about the footsteps, but what because you know i've seen a lot of players that are able to do like large steps and they just right. they're just incredible 
like distance that they can go in a layup, right? And then there's other players who are pretty small with their steps and they go up. Um, is there, like, is that dependent on player to player or, you know, you can this practice? Is, I, would say to player. I would say that every, every basketball player has a different physique, different size, and a different athleticism. Um, and you got to kind of find out, find what works for you within the rules. And so obviously if the rules say you're only allowed two steps max, well, yeah. you can also do one step or you can do two huge steps if you need two huge steps or if you're not capable of doing two huge steps, take another dribble, get closer to the rim and then take your two steps, you right. know, but I think that, um, everybody's a little bit different. So yeah, I mean, not everybody has Usain Bolt's <laughs> stride, but yeah. you got to do what you can with what you have. That's cool. Yeah. I like that you pointed that out. Do what you can within the rules, right? Just because it says two steps to a lay for a layup or two steps, that's all you got. Doesn't mean you have to do the two. Take your right. one. If you're there, hit the, hit the shot, right? Cool. Um, that was awesome. Cool. I, I, I need to get on a court, you know? <laughs> it opens. I don't know. Yeah, they're, I think they're open now here. So I've seen, I've seen a few kids doing hoops. So, but every time I go, it's busy. So imagine that. You yeah. Be around people. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's the second one? The, ho right. the hook, so shot. A hook shot is, um, it's kind of a throwback, um, but mostly it's used by sort of the posts, the bigger players on the team, um, because if you're watching, if you've watched in the NBA and you've seen, you know, the, uh, the Anthony Davis of the league or, you know, Carl Anthony Towns, these are guys who I'm not sure you know who they are, Adriana, but they're the, some of the big name centers in yeah. basketball. And, uh, a hook shot is basically very similar to a layup, except that you're more or less side face. Okay. And so you're going to be shooting the ball. Imagine that that rim is like way close to me, <laughs> but you'd be shooting the ball this way instead of straight on. Okay. Gotcha. And so uh, working on a hook shot is something that is going to, is, is good for all types of players. I mean, I understand that bigs use it more than guards, but you could be a little guy and pull out the odd hook shot. I know my dad used to back in his day and, um, it's a nice way to keep the ball away from defenders who are trying to block your shot. So okay. uh, I'm going to try and do my best to okay. give a good demo of that. Okay. Easiest way to first start just practicing it is you got the rim and you've got your body side face. So your shoulder is basically, you would be under, your left shoulder would be under the rim. But you're going to take a step away and just think about Jumping up, but shooting that way. So weird, I know, but uh, your left hand. Now, this is where that left hand comes in, like you were talking about before, Adrian. This is extremely important. It's your, you know, your guide hand, your blocking hand. You don't want a defender to be able to come over the top and block your shot. That's why you're shooting up the shot. So you want to keep your left hand somewhat involved, but your right hand needs to be going up and over to finish the shot. Oh. So, Square yourself up, and you're just gonna work on really easily, like getting a nice jump and missing, apparently. But uh, some, get some spin on the ball, get it up over the rim, and hope that is basically the basics of the hook shot. There's a lot more uh, interesting ways to get into it. Yeah. Um, you know, you get into higher levels, you start working on more intricate post moves and different ways to get your shot off. But uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you've, for whatever reason, got the ball and in the key, you're kind of close to the rim, but you don't have, you know, a dribble that you can turn into two steps for a layup. Yeah. And you're pivoting around and you're trying to find a way to get your shot off. I mean, no one's really blocking that. You're just going to miss it like I did for now the, um, I think, third time today. So work on that right hand, left hand. Keep that guide hand up. So it is. Cool. Yeah, so this one, you're looking. Yeah, it's, it's the one where you're trying to get over everybody, right? So you're not doing the hook shot from here and trying to hit it. 
you're really extending as tall as possible and, doing that. and that flick is still the same like i i don't know if we yeah. talked about it but or another basketball practice we had the flick that's still always important right same flick that you would for a jump shot that uh, you would have but you now you're going essentially sideways cool um hey can i ask you if you want to show us the pivot again and just like maybe something that kids can practice um on their own court or on their own right. hoop, just doing the so, pivot and showing like right side left side right so one easy way that i would work on this is just imagine that i'm getting a pass from the top so i'm my back is to the rim now right and i'm getting a pass here and now i'm turning over my left shoulder keeping my left foot on planted on the ground. Yeah. Turning over my left shoulder. Okay. Oh. Cool. Awesome. So, same thing to the other direction, just for a quick example. Yeah. You know, you're to the rim, you've got yourself a pass. And there it is. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Brody. Those are sweet. The layup is crucial. I know a lot of kids are like, oh, it's easy. It's easy. But then you go for that breakaway and you miss that layup. So um, I think I think we talked about this last time where it's like some of the basics you just have to repeat over and over and over again. Right? I can't tell you how many times even at age 24 I've gone in the gym and, you know, had somebody help me get up a whole bunch of hook shots for 20 minutes and spent 20 yeah. minutes trying to make 150 hook shots. It's important stuff. You got to work on finishing near the basket. You got to work on all the different intricacies of the game if you want to get good at them. Totally. Finding the sweet spot, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much, Brody, for those skills. Um, well, let's end off our, our session with a little bit of a chat. So we talked about setting, we're talking about setting goals this week. And I think it's so fitting because now that our city's relaunching, a lot of kids are getting outside, sports are coming back slowly. So I think it's important that our kids start learning how to set goals. So I want to sure. ask you, with someone who's accomplished so much, um, how did you set your goals and, you know, how did you keep them in check? Um, I think that, you know, setting, setting your goals is like how I did it. I, I can't really say how in the sense that mostly you got to find what it is that you want. So you got to think about, you know, I want to my goals, for example, I would say I would have big macro goals. I want to make the Canadian junior national team. Okay. But what goes into that? You know, so I'd have to make sure that leading up to that point, I was working on all the little things that I was going to have to be really good at um, in order to do well in that tryout and then make it onto the team so that I could go compete. Um, for me, I think that setting goals is really important to look at from a macro perspective and then divide it up into a whole bunch of little chunks that are easy to, easy to measure, easy to understand, you know, easy to go in and do with a friend, stuff that you don't need, it's going to help you work towards that end big goal, but it's not, you're not going to basically reinvent the wheel overnight. So you got to be able to work at things over time and be patient with it. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. And then did you, you know, a lot of kids like making, will make these plans, these big plans and they'll be like, yeah, I want to play for team Canada, which is awesome. So what are you doing today and every day until that point? Um, right. And those are those little goals that you're doing. Daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, yearly goals, right? Until you get to that point where the Team Canada tryouts are now, right? Find a way to break down the big ones into a whole bunch of little ones that are a lot more attainable in the short run because yeah. you're not just going to wake up one day and walk onto a team and – Totally. have no issues making it you gotta practice yeah totally um so my last question though is did you kind of have someone helping you with these goals because i know we can go right like i'm gonna run i'm gonna do 100 layups this week but is that what's gonna make me a team canada player you know what i mean so there's a point where we need to have them validated we need someone to help us so was there people in your life who kind of helped you through that process uh i would say that there was a lot of people in my life who helped me through that process. But really, to me, it comes down to a couple of things. Uh, I think that first, you need to have 
people who you can trust with what your goals are, people who you can talk to and express your feelings about those goals. For me, those people are typically my parents. And um, in a lot of other cases, they've been my coaches um, and other mentors that I've had in my life. But typically, if there's something that I really want to go and achieve, I'm going to tell my parents this is something I want to go and achieve and probably talk to them about what I need to do to get there. Obviously, I'm 24 now, so there's a lot more sort of people who I go to that aren't necessarily my parents but for kids I mean absolutely create that open dialogue and you know make sure that they're you know in involved in at least helping you understand what it takes to achieve that goal and then that being said I think that a lot of the goals I've set in my life I've been flies are out I've been uh you know, kind of chasing somebody or finding somebody who is that step ahead of me that I want to reach so I can see it, understand it, and then try to become it. Cool. Because in a lot of cases, I can imagine things in my own head, but I never actually see it. And then when I try and put it into, you know, uh, speak it into existence, for lack of a better term, I don't actually know what it is because I haven't actually seen it firsthand. Right. So growing up, I had a big brother a lot, or I had a big brother, I have a big brother, but a lot of the time, uh, what I would do is I would basically like try to play my big brother one-on-one -on -one and get my butt kicked or, you know, we would, my dad used to make us run cross country. And so we'd all be up here and we'd be going for a run on the road and I hated it, but I didn't want to lose by too much to my big brother, you know? Right. And so that's something that would give me something to gauge my progress against. Well, so yeah. now I have that background of having, you know, parents, coaches, mentors who I could say, I really want to achieve this. And then saying, okay, well, here's how I think you can do it. And then I'd have, well, this that I want to achieve. Then I have somebody who is at that point. Right. Who I yeah. can try to just like. Totally. That totally makes sense. I love that. I love that you, you talk to your parents. I think that is so important because they're a huge influence in our life, right? Especially for every, for the kids that are at home, you know, you see your parents so much, or maybe it's a teacher or maybe it's a coach that you have that trust. So definitely ask them. Um, and then I love that you go find someone who's already done it, what you want to do. Because like you said, you're, you're not going to reinvent the wheel. We're not here to reinvent the wheel. It's already been done. So how do we you know, follow the same steps as someone else. Um, that was awesome. Thank you so much for your insight. Um, my last note for everyone who's watching and for all our kiddos out there, if you have a goal, talk to your families, talk to people that you want to trust and find someone who's, who's done it. Reach out to us, reach out to Free Footy. Look, we're friends with Brody Clark, who's going, you know, playing a professional basketball right now and who went and played university uh, basketball. So, Reach out to us if you want, if your dream is to play university or play higher, or maybe just make your high school basketball team, reach out to us. I'm sure we can ask Brody for a little bit of his guidance and help and help you set some goals um, to get on that team or to achieve whatever dreams you want to achieve. So thank you, Brody, so much for the skills. Thank you so much for the chat and the insight. Um, again, congratulations on everything you've accomplished. Um, it's, it's super awesome what you're doing. And I wish you the best of luck in the future. Hopefully we get to see you play soon. Great. Well, thank you very much. I yeah. had an awesome time being on. Hopefully see you soon. Okay. okay. See you guys later. See you tomorrow. We are going to tomorrow's Thursday. So we have practice with FC Edmonton player son. We'll be doing soccer skills. So we'll see you guys then. Um, actually, before we go, I will say on Friday, we are doing basketball again with the Plouffe sisters. Do you know who they are, Brody? Michelle and oh. Kathleen Plouffe. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're coming That's on Friday. Very small in Canada. But, Right? Yeah, they're huge. They play Team Canada now to play in for the three on three team. Um, they play in France right now in professional basketball. So definitely check out if you want more basketball skills on Friday, 4pm. We'll be with them. Thank you guys, everyone. I'll see you guys later. Bye.